let's find out how to control Cakewalk with an iPad. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Did you know the very first video I made for this channel was about connecting to your door with a mobile device? Don't watch it, it's very, very embarrassing for me. I say don't, okay, stay with this one. So anyway, that particular video handled connecting to your door using an Android phone. I made some subsequent videos about connecting to Cakewalk using Android, but I couldn't really find a good solution for iOS. The ones that I tried were clunky, I couldn't get them working, so there was nothing I could really recommend. Now, I haven't found a solution still that works well on iPhone, but I have found a great solution for iOS iPad, which you can see here. This is an app called One Control. This is the door version, okay? Now, it's not free. However, it is very, very cheap. Here in Australia, I think I paid $7.99 for it. In the US, that's going to be around about five bucks and just a few pounds in the UK and a few euros. So not a big outlay of expense, but I can tell you that Cakewalk is one of the supported doors on its supported door list, and it's worked absolutely brilliantly for me. A really easy, and hassle-free setup. So in this video, I'm just going to show you what it's like in action, and then I'm just going to run you through a setup guide should you choose to go ahead and install it onto your iPad. Let's get started with an overview. So as you can see, I've got one control loaded up on my iPad here, and I'm gonna record the screen so you guys can see what I'm doing. So you're looking at that now, and you can see that it's very, it's got a very typical sort of layout for a hardware type of controller. And that's because most of those hardware controllers use something called the Mackie protocol, a way of communicating with a door. So they all share uh, basically the same functionality. So they tend to have a similar layout. Um, in terms of the layout, on the right-hand side at the bottom, it's mostly dominated by transport controls. These are incredibly useful. So we've got obviously play, uh, stop, record, fast forward, rewind, that kind of stuff there, and a big jog wheel as well, which you can see me moving there now. Um, and then also on the left-hand side, it's dominated by things like our faders um, for each channel. We've got pan controls at the top there, and we can mute and solo and, you know, arm for recording, all that kind of good stuff. To be honest, it's easiest seen in the context of Cakewalk. So I'll bring up my cakewalk screen here now and then you can see on the bottom right i have my one control uh, ipad screen there so now as i move uh, my fader on my ipad you can see that corresponding faders are now moving in cakewalk and then also obviously as i say those mute solo you know arming for record buttons and all that kind of good stuff as well now this shows um eight faders here at a time or eight tracks channels here at a time we can move through those by using the bank buttons on the right hand side so I'll just use those and that's banking through eight uh, uh, channels at a time so we can go through uh, our regular tracks and buses and things like that as well if you want to move through one at a time or just shuffling along one at a time then you can use the channel button there as well of course we can play so I'll play the song now stop we could record if we wanted to and we can use that big jog wheel to just to move through the track as you can see there we can even scrub if we press the scrub button first and then use that big jog wheel then we can actually scrub our track like so that could be useful if you just want to work in sort of a very fine way um, of finding issues um, we can also navigate uh, through our project here so um, i'll just make sure that i've got um, cakewalk as my main window and then you can see that if I use the up and down arrows for example um, on the iPad here in one control I can navigate through my project um, we can zoom so if I press the zoom button we can do that kind of thing I'm not sure how useful these things are when you're kind of away from cakewalk and you're using this sort of either a few feet a few meters away or maybe in another room these things may not be that useful um, but they're there anyway if you wanted them and there's a whole bunch of other controls which i could go into um, but i won't because this video would be extremely long we can control things like automation of course we can control things like views so i could go to say the piano roll view here or the staff view like this go back to the console view again i'm not how sure how useful that is when you're operating cakewalk remotely but it may be useful to you and as well as the main track controls, we can do things like control our send levels um, from individual tracks. Uh, we can actually get some control over our plugins and EQ as well. 
the sort of typical functionality that you do get with a hardware door controller. So this is um, sort of very, very handy, as I say, if you're behind a drum kit or you're behind your guitar, which you're about to record and you've got the perfect position, you don't want to move position and go over to your controller. Maybe even if you're just a singer who wants to be away from the computer or um, it's going to sound best in a different room, perhaps, and you want to operate your door remotely like that. Um, this is extremely useful. So it is extremely useful. Is it easy to set up and use? Well, there's three basic steps that you need to follow. So watch the rest of this video to find out how. So the first thing you need to do is to connect your iPad to your PC wirelessly so that it can communicate with Cakewalk. And to do that, I'm going to ask you to install a free little program called RTP MIDI. Just follow the link in the description down below and it's going to take you to this web page, which I don't think has changed in many, many years in terms of its design. Just follow the link on the right hand side where it says download RTP MIDI, download it and then just follow the instructions for installation. It's not a complex thing that I really need to teach you about is just click next 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 and okay and what have you um, follow the instructions there and then open it and you're going to see a screen like this so what we're going to do here is create something called a session with a name this is a sort of a almost like a virtual midi instrument that cakewalk can see so we'll need to give it a name which is meaningful to us so we're going to start off under the session section here by clicking on the plus button so that uh, creates a new session now this is going to come up with the default name here which is not going to be very useful to you so get rid of that and put in your own name whatever you choose i've chosen this name ipad link okay so i've just pasted that in there and i'll paste the same thing under bonjour name i don't know what the relevance of bonjour name is if you do know let me know uh, in the comments down below but honestly i haven't felt the need to investigate it through all the years i've been using this so i just put the same name for both of those and that is done all we have to do now is enable this new session so we click on enable and that shows that it's enabled now and we just have to go ahead and set this up now in cakewalk oh talking of cakewalk if you haven't done so already could you follow the link in the description down below and join my facebook group for cakewalk it's a great community which is building over there everyone's really helpful to each other answering each other's questions i absolutely love it i'm in there on a daily basis if you do go over there and join now let me know that you came from this video and i'll say hi to you so here we are in Cakewalk. I'm going to start off by pressing P on the keyboard to bring up preferences. Then under the MIDI section on the left hand side, I'm going to click on devices. Here we have a list of our MIDI devices. Now, if you remember in RTP MIDI earlier on, I set up the session name as iPad Link. You may have called it something different, but I called it iPad Link. And because of that, it shows up under MIDI devices here. You can see it here under inputs and you can see it further down here under outputs. So I just need need to make sure that I've got that checked for both inputs and for outputs and then I need to make sure at this point that I click the apply button at the bottom right there so I click on apply it flashes for a moment and then I can go ahead to control services so on the left hand side I'll click on control services there and I need to add a new one so I'll go to the top right and I'll click on this little icon here to add a new control surface do that now then uh, under control services I need to select a protocol which is going to be Mackie control here so I'll click on that and then under input port I'll go into down and select iPad link or whatever you called yours and then under output again iPad link click on OK and that is done in terms of cakewalk I'll just make sure that I apply it and then I'll go ahead and close that window now we just need to go ahead and open up the app on our iPad so when you first open up the app on the iPad, you'll see a screen, something like this, where you need to select your door. So if you scroll down to the bottom there, you can see Cakewalk is listed there. So I'll just click on that so that Cakewalk is selected. Now, if you don't happen to see that for some reason, you've been messing around with it and that's gone, then just click the little button right in the middle at the bottom. Okay, just click on that and that brings up that door selection screen. So as I say, go ahead and then select, whoops, go ahead and select Cakewalk from from there now you'll see at the top left hand corner waiting for connection okay it's going to say touch here for help if you do 
touch there for help. It's just going to tell you to install RTP MIDI, etc. What you need to do actually is go ac across to RTP MIDI. I'll pull that up there now. And you can see in RTP MIDI under the directory section, it now says Michael's iPad because that's the name of my iPad. So it will say something different for you, whatever the name of your iPad is there. So what you need to do now is to go ahead and click on the connect button and that connects your iPad up to RTP MIDI which is also connected to Cakewalk. Now it can take a second or two for things to happen but you will see if I go back to my iPad now that things have changed. I've now got the tracks, the track names and things at the top left hand side and indeed if I go ahead to Cakewalk here and I start to try and use the controls you can in fact if I press play you can see you can see and hear that that is working. So that's all hooked up. Now you don't need to sort of open up RTP MIDI every single time. I've found if I just start up my computer as normal, it seems to start as a service. So that will be there ready to use each time. If you do have any specific problems, and I can't sort of delve into all of the possibilities right now, but I have seen some issues with people having connection problems um, in the past with RTP MIDI. One thing that I would check out out, first of all is whether your firewall on your computer is blocking RTP MIDI from working that's just one possibility there Oh, another thing I quickly want to mention, when you are setting this up, do make sure that your iPad and your PC are on the same Wi-Fi network. That's important to make sure that this is going to work well. If you've got any questions at all, please do ask in the comments down below. I'm not really an expert on this, but I'll try my best to help you out. Or, of course, you could head over to my new Facebook group. A link for that is in the description, and you could ask your question there. People are ever so helpful over there. You should definitely go there and join do it now. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video.